Star Trek Strange New Worlds has finally premiered and we have a new Star Trek theme and intro to analyze. Jeff Russo has a few tricks up his sleeve this time and one glaring mistake. So let's dive into the references in the Strange New Worlds intro. Strange New Worlds is being billed as a refreshing look back at the original Star Trek and going back to the standalone episodic adventures of the original. With the opening, they sought to do the same thing. Visually speaking, they made plenty of references to past intros, but oddly enough, not the original series. All we needed was a shot like this, but instead we got references to the intros to TNG. Maybe DS9. Definitely Voyager. Enterprise, Discovery, and even the Kelvin movies. With all those visual references, you'd think there would be music references too. Well, the opening is the iconic Alexander Courage opening with a little blend of the Dennis McCarthy intro for TNG. To seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no one has gone before. To seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no one has gone before. Side note about that comment, Dennis McCarthy originally wrote a theme to TNG that I'll actually cover in another video, but the final intro is the same up until Jerry Goldsmith's theme from the motion picture that kicks in instead. So yes, this intro was arranged by Dennis McCarthy. Instead of the typical pickup into the theme that we got from the original series in The Next Generation, we instead get a low ostinato that I've seen comments attributing to film music and Hans Zimmer. And while I do agree, Pirates isn't what came to my mind. Michael Kamen's Robin Hood did instead, which predates Pirates by over 10 years and sounds a little closer to me. The main theme kicks in and it's a variation on Alexander Courage's main theme from the original series. I found a comment about the alterations and thinking it might be in minor, but they were unsure. Well, the first chord is a G7, but the third is kind of missing. And that third is what strongly identifies whether a chord is major or minor. The other chords here do the same thing and don't have a strong third to show the quality of the chord, making it more ambiguous. But if we follow the notes of the melody, Jeff changed it to where all the melodic notes are diatonic, where the original had some chromaticism. The second call to this theme actually gives us a full scale, showing that this is indeed in G Aeolian, or the natural minor scale. There are little interjections between the main theme calls, and this happens in the original theme as well, except the notes are different here, and I don't think it's unique to this theme. The first is a similar gesture to this scene in a mock time. Yes, the notes are different, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a one-to-one, -one, just like the main theme notes. For this though, I'm rating it as plausible because this isn't a random scene either, because it's the fight music that Eddie Murphy references in Delirious. The transition into the second theme has a similar gesture to the strings from the theme to the motion picture. The second theme is supposed to be a unique theme, but I can't help but hearing similarities to older themes. The melody is a similar line to the Undiscovered Country opening, although not as many notes and of course slightly different. The background ostinato and the strings and the trumpet sound like faster versions of the ostinato to the overture or the love theme from the motion picture.
The final cadence of the theme is also the same notes from the theme to the motion picture. Granted, the motion picture lead into the dominant, where here it's leading into the tonic, but still the same exact notes. This final chord buildup is exactly the same as the champagne bottle smashing into the Enterprise in Star Trek Generations. To close this out, we get the original unaltered main theme on the theremin. But why the theremin? I've loved the theremin from the first moment I heard the original Star Trek theme. Actually, the original theme was not played on the theremin. Here's season one. and the other two seasons added vocal to it. There's no theremin in there. As further proof, what did Alexander Courage say about its instrumentation? Well, I did it in a week, composed it, orchestrated it, and conducted it. It was, you know, just another show. I wrote it for a marvelous lady named Lulie Jean Norman, plus a flute, Jack Cookerley's organ, and maybe a vibraphone. And the whole idea was to mix it in so that it would be a what is that that I'm hearing sound, you know. So why is the theremin associated with this theme? Well, we can thank sci-fi movies from earlier, like the opening titles to The Day the Earth Stood Still. I think a more accurate reasoning for this is thanks to another movie that opens with a theremin sliding up a seventh and then down a few chromatic notes. While not exactly identical to the Star Trek theme, it's awfully close. And when it's just the theremin playing this line, it made me think more of Ghostbusters than it did Star Trek. So what are your thoughts on the theme to the Strange New World? Are you excited to see what adventures are in store for the Star Trek show that's going back to its roots? Let me know what you think down below, and I'll of course see you next time.